Black, and I'm here with Cassandra Clare, uh, author of the Mortal Instruments series, and I have some questions for you. Okay. You have a really interesting structure for the Mortal Instruments series. Uh, do you want to talk about that? Um, I modeled the structure of the trilogy a little bit on um, the in Dante's Inferno, Virgil's descent into and return from the underworld, which is sort of part of the classic Campbellian hero's journey. The hero must always descend into hell and return. Um, so the first book is structured on the theme of descent, of descending into an unknown world, um, of into shadow, into darkness, into a place that you're unfamiliar with. Um, the second book is structured on hell, on being in the inferno, the transformative period, uh, uh, the transformative experience of of hell and the fires of hell, and all of the epigraphs in the second book have to do with hell. And the third book um, is the ascent from the underworld, the end of the experience, the coming back changed. Um, so all of the epigraphs in that book have to do with heaven or with ascending. So speaking about structure, uh, one of the things that I've heard of you talk about before is how much you like to set up love triangles, like, mm. and why you like them. And I was wondering if you would if you would talk a little bit about that. I know we've had this uh, conversation many times, and I always enjoy uh, enjoy hearing your take on it. I know not not everybody loves the love triangle as much as I do, but I, I truly do. I mean, she doesn't like them. Um, I, to me, love triangles are a fabulous thing for character development because usually at a love triangle, if you do it right, the two prongs of the love triangle, your two choices that you can make. Um, represent choosing different kinds of life for yourself. So really in, for instance, in the Mortal Instruments, Clary chooses between Jace and Simon. Jace represents the, the magical world, the shadow world, um, this world of demon hunters that she has only just encountered that is very dangerous but also exciting. Simon represents the normal world, having a normal real life, having a family and children, having um, the kind of life she's always thought that she was going to have. So choosing between these two boys is also about choosing what kind of life she wants to have for herself. And for me, love triangles, when they're fun, when they're done right, um, they, um, they, they teach you these things about the characters. So um, in the Mortal Instruments, you know, you had you had a lot of characters, and you had you, you had Clara, you had Jace, you had Simon, you had sort of your main characters, but a lot of people came on and off the scene throughout the series. Are there any characters that you wish you had a little bit more time with? Okay, um, I will say a character who really only appears in the third book, though his appearance is sort of foreshadowed in the earlier books. So his name is Sebastian, and he's on the cover of the third book, which you can see over there. Many people have asked me if that's Simon or if that's Alec. It's neither of them. It's Sebastian. This is his the first book in which he makes an appearance, but I gather that my cover designer felt that his appearance was spectacular enough to warrant the cover, so I was pleased about that. Um, he is also a shadow hunter. He comes from um, Idris, which is the shadow hunter's home country, and um, he is someone that Clary meets when she travels there who helps her with her quest to find something that will save her mother. And since I only got to, uh, to write about him in this third book, I kind of was sad that I didn't get to spend a little bit more time with him because he was a lot of fun for me. He's very different than the other characters. And I have a final question for you, and this is asked in complete sincerity. Is it true you collect the tears of your readers. <laughs> I and, <laughs> and if you and if this is true, I want to know what is it you're planning on doing with them. They keep me young. I'm actually 75 <laughs> years old. <laughs> I just have to sprinkle them on me every morning. And how do you collect them? I also want to know they, that. They, they email them to me as attachments. <laughs> um, I don't enjoy the pain of readers, even though I many times get many emails from readers that are like, "Why are you torturing us with this?" With this, you know, romance with Clary and Jace, with these other unanswered questions, why won't you, you know, tell me, tell me the ending? Um, I never tell the ending. I do believe that the best way to experience the resolution of a plot line or a question is to read it. It's not as much fun if somebody just tells you what happens. Um, I don't enjoy the suffering of my readers, but I have always been a reader who, you know, reads books, gets extremely invested in them, suffers when bad things happen to the characters, but I feel that that also compounds my enjoyment when the book is resolved in a satisfactory way without the pain. You don't get the happiness. <laughs> and so I hope um, when people finish City of Glass that they will feel that uh, their suffering was worth it. If not, you can uh, mail your letters of complaint to Holly, and she'll have to me. <laughs> Just remember, at a later date, <laughs> you can turn to the last page first. <laughs> now that that's the path of evil. Well, thank you, Cassandra Clare. Thank you, Holly Black. <laughs>